Hey Scott, Bounty Hunter Boot Camp. This is my top eight reasons to never, ever carry a Taser Pulse for bail enforcement or private security. She texts him, let me see your hands. Get on the ground, get on the ground. Now fucking move your hands in the fucking air. All right, so I'm going to discuss the ins and outs, ups and downs on Taser Pulse versus Professional X26 and X2. And you're like, well, Scott, who are you to give your two cents on the Taser Pulse um, debate? And uh, I've got eight years of um, being a certified Taser instructor for the X2 and the X26 and the X3 when it was out and the X and the X Rep. Um, as an instructor, I have tased hundreds of people in classrooms, in our boot camp, for private security, for security contractors. I've even certified law enforcement in the use of the X-26. So I know a little bit about what I'm talking about through the years and years of not only teaching um, X-26 use to law enforcement, private security, and bail enforcement, but I've also carried one for the last 10 years. And I was carrying the M18 before the X-26 and then the X-26 came out and then I went to the M-26 and then I went to the X-26 and then I've since gone to the X-2. This is my top eight reasons to never carry a taser pulse for private security, bail enforcement, or fugitive recovery. Here we go. All right, the 30 second ride. I wanna talk about this 30 second ride here. The taser pulse tases a person for 30 seconds. I've heard the argument, well, I can just shut it off. Well. That's not the way the taser pulse is designed. The taser pulse is designed to, to tase somebody, drop the taser, and run. You have a 30 second window to evade. That's the way the taser pulse was designed. It's a defensive weapon. The taser pulse is a defensive tool. The X26, the X2, these are offensive tools. And we'll talk about that a little down the road here. But the 30 second ride, Graham V. Connor says that every trigger pull um, for law enforcement has to be justified that each five second window of a taser X26 or the X2 law enforcement tasers um, every trigger pull has to be justified and it's a five second trigger pull um, we can be seen as seeing excessive force in a 30 second ride I don't care if you can shut it off you can't tell me how long that person actually rode the lightning for with a taser pulse and I can tell you a lot easier with a X26 or an X2 plus of some other features that are in the X2 and X26 that we'll just talk about in a minute here. Case law for the Fourth Circuit Court of Appeals has said that taser use can be unconstitutional and can be excessive force. The Fourth Circuit Court of Appeals uh, ruling is affecting law enforcement on a daily basis and whatever affects law enforcement will eventually affect bail enforcement and fugitive recovery as well as private security. The Taser Pulse has a 15-foot cartridge. That's it, 15-foot cartridge, nothing more. Uh, the X26, the X2, they have 15, 21, and 25-foot. We only use the 25-foot uh, cartridges, which are a 25-foot cartridge. Uh, they have the XP Extended Probes, which is basically a straight number eight fish hook. If you're in bail enforcement and you're not using the 25-foot cartridges, wake up. Spend the money, get the 25-foot cartridge. Much better cartridge, much better penetration. So the the X26 and the X and the X2 both can carry 25, 21, and 15-foot cartridges in these models. And the Taser Pulse, only a 15-foot cartridge. Once again, it's designed for consumers. It's not designed for law enforcement or bail enforcement or private security. It is designed for consumers. The Taser Pulse is designed for consumer use. It's a drop and run. You tase somebody who's attacking you, you drop it, and you run. You have a 30 second window in order to get away. You submit a police report, you get a new Taser Pulse. That's the way the Taser Pulse is designed. The Taser Pulse is not a law enforcement, private security, or bail enforcement tool. It is a consumer tool designed for consumers. Little to minimal training. I know Taser Pulse has a, uh, a training program um, 
But I guarantee you 99.9% .9 of the people that are buying taser pulses that aren't using them for self-defense, that are using them for bail enforcement, aren't getting training. And the training is going to be designed around defensive tactics. It's going to be designed around a defensive model. If you look at the videos online from Taser, everything about the pulse is designed for women and uh, a vulnerable persons in society that need to protect themselves that can't or don't want to choose to carry a firearm. So they carry the Taser pulse, kind of like the way uh, pepper spray is. It's an alternative to pepper spray. I guarantee you. Uh, I'll tell you, if I had a choice between pepper spray, if I could only carry one thing and it was pepper spray or a taser, I would probably carry pepper spray. It's a little bit messier, but it's far more effective in my opinion. And I've only been a taser instructor for eight years and tased hundreds of people um, to, to make that opinion. But that's just my opinion. So little to no training necessary. So if you're going to carry one of these and you want to be a professional, in carrying an X26 or an X2, and you go through a program like what Bounty Hunter Bootcamp offers, which is the actual certification for the X2 and the X26, you actually have to take a written test to be certified. Um, there's, it's a two-phased written test, the same test that law enforcement takes. It's the exact same training that we provide in class is the exact same class that law enforcement goes through for taser operation. So, you might be able to articulate a little bit better in court on what your justification was for using your taser and what exactly the taser does um, to your uh, defendant. You could probably testify a little bit better in court if you were certified. Just my opinion, but hey, what am I thinking? The cops do it. I know we're not cops, but it's good enough for law enforcement. It's good enough for me. So that brings me to the next item which is accountability. With the taser pulse, there is no accountability. How long did you pull the trigger for? Five seconds, maybe 10, I don't know. Nobody really knows until you play the video back or somebody's sitting there with a stopwatch timing how long you tase that person for. Or uh, under the heat of fighting with somebody, you're gonna tase them and sit there and go one 1,000, 1,000, three 1,000, four 1,000, five 1,000. No, you're not gonna do that. That's unrealistic. Taser X26, I pull the trigger, what happens? It's a five second ride. It's five seconds of riding the lightning. One trigger pull, five seconds. Two trigger pulls, that's 10 seconds. Now, granted, if I hold the trigger down on most X26s, it'll continue to tase. But you can connect these to a computer. I have a cable to reset these and connect them to a computer. And I can tell how long it was used for and all the weather conditions and temperature and all this other crazy uh, metadata that comes out of the X26. The taser pulse, nothing. You don't, got, you don't have anything. So there's zero accountability in the taser pulse. And if you work in private security or you work in bail enforcement and you have some kind of insurance um, and or uh, you, know, you get into some litigation, and with, with one of these things, it'd be nice to be able to say, this is exactly what we did and have the data to back it up. And the only way you're gonna do that is with one of these professional tools, the X2 or the X26. All right, next item on the list is that the X26 and the X2 has case law on its side. How does it have case law on its side? From tens of thousands of people being tased with these things and having it go through the court system, the Court of Appeals, the Supreme Court, and what have you. These things have gone through the court system on excessive force, on, on use of force. There's not a law enforcement agency in the United States that doesn't have a taser lawsuit right now. So the um, X26 and the X2 has case law on its side. And uh, if it's good enough for uh, law enforcement, it's good enough for bail enforcement and fugitive recovery and private security. Now, this is just my opinion here, but the taser pulse is a defensive tool. It is used to defend yourself. When bail enforcement, when bail enforcement and fugitive recovery use an X26, we're kind of using it more as an offensive tool and a tool to gain compliance and to gain control of a situation to lawfully take a person into custody. We don't want to be using these to commit crimes because that in itself would be a crime, correct? So we're using these in a lawful manner that we've been certified to use 
to use in, and we're using them more in an offensive manner um, and to gain compliance and to gain control. How are you gaining control and compliance with a consumer model designed for self-defense? It's not as easy. Yeah, granted, they're a little bit cheaper to use. They're a little bit cheaper to buy, but you get what you pay for. This taser right here, I paid $200 for in a pawn shop. $200. So anybody that tells you that they're paying $600 for an X26 used, they're crazy because you can find these things. You can find good deals on these. All right, next item on the taser pulse, why the taser pulse should not be used, is the slow reload. Everybody that I've talked to that has a taser pulse says the reload on them is a pain in the butt. I'll put some links below of some videos where guys are reloading. X26 is super fast. The X26 reload, I take this thing off, I drop it, I pick up another one, boom, that's it. Fast reload, fast and easy. My X2, same way. This is a two-shot semi-automatic taser. It has two cartridges. If I miss with one, I can re-engage a new target with a new cartridge. Reload on this, super easy. Wow, look how easy that is. Super easy. Taser pulse, not as easy. Try doing that on the run while you're chasing after somebody, trying to change your taser cartridge, grab one off your vest or grabbing one off the extended mag the extended uh, digital power magazine because you can have, because these things have tactical advantages that, were, that are available and options that you can add on to these. They're not just some consumer model that you buy at um, some sporting goods store in your local mall. These are professional tools which brings me to the next thing, which is the X2 and the X26 are designed for the job that we do. Blade Tech, Safari Land make holsters for these things. Um, they have different battery options. If you have a monster hand like mine, they've got batteries with extra lips. They've got cameras that can attach to these um, that every time you turn them on and pull the trigger and, and tase somebody or discharge a taser cartridge, you're recording the video. There's a lot of compliance, a lot of accountability built into these models. And that's not built into the taser pulse. It's just not. All right, lastly, if, if you carry a taser for work, you have a duty to be certified in this, to take the six to eight hour class and get certified in the use and operation of the X2 and the X26. You have a responsibility to your clients. You have a responsibility to yourself, to your family, and to everybody else. It's about accountability. Our industry is already under attack as it is. And if we're seen as excessively tasing people, that's excessive force. It could land you with a lawsuit. It could land you with criminal charges, all because you chose to buy a taser pulse because it was cheap and it's small and it's cool or whatever your justification for buying it versus buying a law enforcement tool that's designed for law enforcement that has accountability built into it. You can get a battery for the X2 that every time you pull the trigger, it will shut the device off and you have to turn the device back on you have to turn the device off and turn it back on to engage your next cartridge. That's accountability. Having a taser that's designed for consumer use, that's not built as tough and as rugged as these are, that you can just tase somebody, drop it and run, and has difficult reloads, you know, it's, it's a no-brainer for me. And I see zillions of people out on Instagram and on YouTube that are using the Taser Pulse and I just say, say no. Say no to the Taser Pulse for bail enforcement, fugitive recovery, and private security. Get yourself a professional tool. They are affordable. They're a little bit harder to find um, at a good price, but $350 to $400 for a used X26 in the fall of 2019 is a fair price. $650 Maybe not, unless there's some kind of warranty and it's coming remanufactured. Uh, we give students um, order forms for a, for a vendor that uh, we like to use, but there are a lot of options out there. You know, those green cartridges that I talked about are restricted to law enforcement only. You actually have to show them uh, your business license and that you work in bail enforcement or private security, or you can't get the green cartridge. But bad guy can get the yellow cartridge. I use green cartridge. I use 25 footers in in all my tasers, um, it's the only way to go. It's, 
it's a no-brainer for us. They, they, you know, they cost five, ten bucks more cartridge, but they're the way to go. Anyway, this is my two cents on the Taser Pulse. The Taser Pulse is a great self-defense tool because it, that's what it's designed to be, is a self-defense tool. It is not designed to be an offensive tool to take somebody into control. Now, one of the things I was going to talk about was the ability to drive stun, but I have since, through research, seen that that the Taser Pulse can drive stun, but can it drive stun with the cartridge on? That's the million dollar question. Um, because they want you to take the cartridge off to drive stun. And then if you're drive stunning somebody, as you've seen in videos that we've posted, you're just uh, achieving pain compliance. It's just causing localized pain unless you have a probe somewhere else in somebody. So it's really important that you get those probes on with the taser. But that's enough on my taser versus uh, professional X26 and X2. Just say no. Spend the money. Get the better tool. I mean, these bad boys are about 1200 bucks brand new. You could deal with companies like Proforce Law Enforcement Supply out of Arizona. Great people. Uh, I'll put a link in the description below to uh, order and check out what Proforce has to offer. I'm also going to put in the links below um, some case law, Graham B. Connor, um, the 4th District ruling, as well as some other interesting stuff and tidbits on Taser. So thank you so much for tuning in. Every Monday and Thursday, new videos. Um, this is a little bonus video. But make sure you hit the subscribe button, have the bell on. Um, haters are going to hate. Um, leave a comment uh, below. Give us your opinion. Always interested to see what uh, other people's opinions are. You know, maybe the Taser Pulse works for you. And if it works for you, that's great and that's awesome. But there still is no accountability, even if it is working for you. Zero accountability. And that's what it's about. It's about accountability. Um, it's about holding each other and holding ourselves accountable and also holding ourselves accountable to prosecutors and law enforcement um, so we can justify the use of force that we need to use. We never want to use more force than necessary. We always want to use reasonable and necessary force. Reasonable and necessary. What is reasonable to somebody else in that same situation and necessary force to overcome the obstacle that is in front of us. Anyway, thank you. Thanks for watching all the way to the end as always. Love you guys. And uh, we'll see you on the next video.